welcome back to my channel today I am here with my fiance Mike and we are going to be talking about how to have a healthy relationship um, this is a series that I'm gonna put in my how to adult 101 series because it is kind of related to young adults or people that have just started to get into more serious relationships and trying to figure out what is healthy or what's not healthy, what they want and all that kind of stuff. And I just want to give you some tips on how we make our relationship work. And yeah, so I have a list and so does Mike and we are gonna go back and forth and we have 10 tips for you guys so if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up oh that's me <laughs> and be sure to subscribe down below for more how to adult 101 videos all right let's just get started with the first tip open communication you want to go into detail i was not prepared for that uh, openly talking to each other and communicating like what we're doing right now I feel I like don't know. I feel like for open communication it's literally talking about everything and anything in your life that's happening obviously you shouldn't be keeping any secrets from each other you shouldn't be you know not telling each other everything I feel like the open communication part is so important to just be talking to each other about everything and anything because once you get married you are one so that's See, what you knew what I meant. All right, tip number two is my tip, and that is to trust each other. Um, obviously, it's not gonna work out if you guys are always, you know, on the fence. I'm like, oh my gosh, where are you going? Who is this person you're hanging out with? Who is that person you're hanging out with? You got to be able to trust each other when you are in a serious relationship, because without that trust, you're never going to have that real bond with each other you're just going to be questioning each other all the time and that's not a healthy relationship at all do you have anything to say about it yeah ditto what you say <laughs> you're so cute uh compromising not everything is going to go your way which is hard because you know the girl is typically right all the time <laughs> sure Okay, fine. I try to compromise with Mike because sometimes when things don't go my way, I kind of get... <laughs> uh, cute. <laughs> yeah, and I kind of get like annoyed and angry and I feel like you have to be able to understand the other person and see where they're coming from even though it's really hard. Sometimes I do freak out a lot <laughs> when it comes to like compromising. It's really hard for me to compromise because I'm a very independent person and I like to think for myself. But anyways, yeah. So to be able to maybe if you guys, you know, like date nights, one person wants to go to another restaurant, another person wants to go to this restaurant. How about you compromise and be like, how about we go to this restaurant one day and then this restaurant another day? That kind of compromise. Obviously, it's going to be a lot bigger once you um, get married and get into like finances and having kids and all that kind of stuff. But always start small and then work your way up because then you'll start with a healthy relationship to begin with. Fourth one is to know each other's love language. This is one that Mike and I struggle with the most, I feel what? like. You don't think so? Okay. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Why? We, I, I wouldn't say we struggle with it. We have two very different love languages. Yeah, I guess. So we, we openly communicate <laughs> and we do make compromises. Mm -hmm. And we trust each other's love language, see? <laughs> so Relating cute. it all back. I mean, my definitely number one would be words of affirmation and then quality time for sure. Um, his love language is definitely more like physical touch and acts of services, I would say. Okay. Or like, I don't know. I, like No, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you're more of a, the type of person if he's, if we're both in the same room, he's totally happy with just the two of us in the same room. Me, 
I want him to pay attention to me. I want him to like touch me. I want him to talk to me. And that's like the way I am. But him, if I'm in the same room with him, he's totally fine. So we definitely work on that a lot. And he's really bad with his words too, if you can't tell. <laughs> I am a wordsmith. So yeah, he likes to show um, his love touching and active services and stuff like that and I like more of words of affirmation like he loves me and that he cares for me and that I'm the only one that kind of affirmation not you're beautiful he says that all the time that's why it bothers me because you don't say anything else I didn't say other things mm-hmm mm -hmm. but anyways so yeah <laughs> So my turn? Longer than expected, yeah. Oh, hey. Number five. Thank you. It's a listening to each other. Don't just let the other person speak, but actually hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. As weird as that sentence sounds. It's more like listening to each other and then understanding where the other person is coming from instead of just pretending to listen or listening but having it go in one ear and out the other, where if you actually listen to them, you'll understand where they, where they are coming from in the situation that you are in. Yeah? Mm -hmm. okay. Number six is to have time for each other. This is also really hard for Mike and I because our schedules are a little different and when we do see each other, it is normally at night because he works, you know, a nine to five kind of job. And so at night, I'm either um, out with friends or he's hanging out with his friends, playing video games, stuff like that. And we just need to be able to come together and just spend that time together. That is why um, we always talk to each other at night, ask how our days are. Uh, we say what we're grateful for, what we love about each other, all that kind of stuff. Um, at night and I also really enjoy having dinner with each other as well just to like be able to talk and hang out even though we're eating and to not be on our phones as much as well when we are around each other. Mm -hmm. yeah. Seven? Mm -hmm. Seven. Doing the little things. Um, doing the little things for each other is pretty much like when I come home from a long day of work and the dishes are done or he does um, laundry or pick up after himself or something like that. It's just the little things that just make me feel good when I come home and it just makes our relationship stronger. I mean, the same things based on like how our schedules match up, stuff like that. But then mm -hmm. sometimes you, you cook a meal and it's ready. When I get home or sometimes if we know we're going out stuff like that you'll have everything ready to go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. number eight is kind of this kind of goes hand in hand with the trust thing and that is to allow each other to be independent um, I'm not gonna be calling him up 24 7 when he's hanging out with his buddies and be like where are you come home I miss you I mean I do that sometimes but I let him hang out with them you do it more as a time. joke. Then like some girls are really clingy or some guys are really clingy and always want to know where you are at 24 seven, not being able to hang out with your friends or they're always tagging along, stuff like that. We just have to, we like to be able to just go out and do our own thing and not have to worry about anything. Number nine, compliment each other. And that's what it says. No, it does Yes, it does. <laughs> this is like the love language. <laughs> it's not just compliment each other. It's showing each other affection. I show you affection. Yeah. That's what, that's healthy relationship. You're in a relationship. It's not like, like you're in love. You need to show each other your affection. You need to be able to love on each other and, you know, come home, have a kiss, get, like have a kiss on the cheek kiss on the lips, hug each other, love on each other, you know, like that. <laughs> but yeah, being able to show each other that affection um, can, you know, make your relationship more romantic and not fizzle out 
Um, that's what makes it healthy. That's what makes your marriage, your relationships, whatever, last for such a long time. Um, I feel like once you're with each other long enough, uh, it just gets into a routine and you don't really show that affection as much anymore because you're always busy. Um, when you have kids especially, um, from what I've heard, I've never experienced it, but you're always focused on kids. Be sure to make time for each other. Be sure to make time for that affection so your love can be, you know, can spark again. Last but not least, number 10 is to be able to work through your problems together. Um, that's so, so important nowadays when there's some things that you don't want to work through together anymore and you just like distance yourself. Um, your relationship is not going to work out if you're not going to work that out through the hard times and only enjoy the good times. Um, I see a lot of stuff on Facebook saying that um, as older couples, they always quote like when they were when they were younger, um, back in their day or whatever, they work things out instead of, you know, walk away, instead of just giving up, instead of leaving. They talk it through before they get, you know, before they go to bed and figure it out. And the next day, it's, maybe it's not all better, but at least they understand each other, understand where the other person is coming from, um, that kind of thing. We hope these tips help you all. And... If you um, like what you see, be sure oh. to give the video a thumbs up because this is all that we have for you guys. Um, if we are missing anything, be sure to leave a comment down below. And Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> yeah. Smash that subscribe button. Oh my <laughs> and yeah, we would love to hear um, tips and tricks on how your relationship has stayed strong. Um, just leave them in the comments down below and if you want to see more of us, we're always on Instagram Well, I always have him on my Instagram So be sure to follow me on there and yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video Bye now. Peace And what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> What's the the third one? You don't know what your next one is? No. Yeah, um, my love language is definitely more, uh, what do you think my love language is? I don't know the names for all the different categories, but I know there are specific types. Now is not the time to look it up. Why? Moving on to number five. No, babe! <laughs> oh, words of information and, and quality time. So, that was two. That's my love language. What's your yours? love language? How do you have two love languages? You're beautiful today. No, 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 no. What do you mean? Every time I tell okay, you you're not beautiful. Your, okay, <laughs> not you're beautiful. Not you're beautiful, but more like personality-wise. Like, you never talk about my personality. <laughs> oh, you're cute. <laughs> All right, number six. I was breathing, sorry. Number six is to. <laughs> sorry. I just, I had to take a breath right there. Do you want to add to that? No. <laughs> Why? I feel like I'm the only one that's talking. That's, yeah. You're the vocal PR. Major person, <laughs> lady. Okay, well, I hope these tips. Okay, you say, I hope these tips help you guys. We hope these tips help you guys. <laughs> you said, that. come up with what you, what I would say. Um, 